Hey there and welcome to the True Colors Personality Assessment or Leadership Assessment. Now as a warning, this video that you're about to watch is catered to UCR, University of California Riverside students and student orgs. If you want to take this assessment, you want a more general look down in the comments, you can just click that link and it takes you to another video that's really more general. Before we take this assessment, some things to know. You can either watch this video by yourself and learn some things about your own personality style, or you can watch it in a group as part of a meeting or with a group of friends, or you can just send this video to others and compare results. This is a test that's been facilitated by many people, so you may encounter others that have taken it. As a warning, some folks interchange the yellow color with a gold, and some people say orange instead of red. I keep it simple with the primary colors. Just know that there's some variations out there. Lastly, this is a simple version of the test. We're going to discuss a primary color that you receive from this test, but there are a lot of combinations. Maybe you're a yellow, but your red number is just one shy. That's very different than someone that is dominantly yellow. Nothing even comes close. We can't cover every variation and every ratio of colors, so don't be surprised if there's a few things you disagree with, which is likely due to having a large or small number in one of the other colors. So we're going to take a test. As I'm going through it, there may be times that you'll want to pause and reference what's on screen. There is no time limit. If you're doing this as a group, pause and just have people confirm when they're ready to move on. Everyone will need a piece of paper and pen or something to write on, such as a phone or a laptop. You just need a way to write down your choices in the following test. If you're handwriting your answers to the test, I want you to draw one line along the top of your scratch paper and then draw three lines vertically so that you'll have spaces for four columns from left to right. If you're writing on a laptop or on a phone, you can just have four separate groups of numbers, maybe separated somehow to help you tell them apart. So let's do the first question together. What you're going to see on the screen are four groups. Each group with three words. For example, this first group has active, opportunistic, and spontaneous in the first column. You're going to look at these groupings and see which group is most like you. Maybe I decide out of these four groups that the group most like me is authentic, harmonious, and compassionate. So in that column, I'm going to write the number four. Four is the highest number you'll have since there's four options. You then look through the groups of words again, and you decide which group is next like you. I decide that next I'm versatile, inventive, and competent. So in the third column, I'd list a three, and then two, and then one, which would be the group least like me. Four, three, two, one. If you're typing your results, you should have a number in each section. These are my imaginary numbers, so take a minute to look at these four groups of words and decide what your rankings would be. If you don't know a word, you can either look it up or just base your decision on the two words that you do know. Feel free to pause now to finish these rankings. Now I'm going to show you a total of five groups. You just finished the first. I'm going to play some light music while you take some time. Each set of words will only be on screen for about 10 seconds. So pause the video while you or your group write down your choices. Again, four means the group that you align with the most. One means the group you relate to the least. Okay, so pause the video or go back if you're still assigning values to each group. If you've completed, add up the numbers. Once you have a total, you're going to write which color is for which column or collection of numbers. The first group is red. The second group is yellow. 
the third is green, and the fourth is blue. Take a moment to write down those colors. The column or group that has the highest value, meaning you related to those groups the most, is now your dominant color. If you tied for your top value, as we discuss the colors, you can self-identify which color you think is most like you. If you tied for your second or third highest number, it doesn't really matter much. Just focus on your top. So now that you know your assigned color or what two colors you tied for, we're going to go color by color and discuss what these personalities mean. Watch all of them. In a bit, we're going to discuss dynamics and how you work with people of different personalities, so it's important that you have a good sense as to what these colors mean. We're going to start by talking about red. People that are dominant reds are adventurous, usually spontaneous and able to quickly make decisions. They love experiences most of all. So these are likely people that have great stories to tell on a Monday morning about what they did during the weekend. Even if they only did the mundane, their spark and excitement can make even boring things sound electric. They can jump topics quickly, so don't always expect too much depth in conversation, but the conversation will be quick and exciting and easy to listen to. Most dominant reds tend to be confident and charismatic, or at least are able to present themselves that way. In terms of how they work, reds don't enjoy desk jobs. They'd rather be out doing something. They also don't like being told how to do something, but appreciate the freedom to do the job their way. They're not a fan of deadlines or rules. If reds were athletes, I'd compare them to running backs in American football. They take the ball and they run. They may not enjoy the process of coming up with the plays or making sure it's the right time for the play, but if you give them the ball, their natural strength is to run with it. With projects, they don't necessarily enjoy all the prep and strategy, but they love the implementation, the process of making it happen. Reds also love to make things competitive, so you may notice that they turn mundane tasks or errands into competitions. Who can finish their job the quickest, or which product will be chosen as the best? Again, this is if someone was 100% red, so there will be variations based on the percentages of other colors. If the red flourishes when they're able to run with a project, it's best that they're paired up with a yellow. Yellows tend to be immediately identified with the adjective organized. They keep notes in detailed calendars. Their workspace might be filled with post-it notes and reminders and to-do lists. They schedule their day to an incredible amount of detail and love to plan for things to come. They're also often called efficient. They'll use this organization to compare pros and cons before making decisions. It can stress them out when other people in their lives are not organized. So people that are not punctual or people that don't follow through with their word can be especially stressful for yellows. These yellows also tend to be traditional, not necessarily in values, but in how they work. If something has worked in the past, yellows might have a tendency to stick with that thing. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So routine can be something for yellows to fall into easily. They're also labeled as parental meaning that because they're so organized, they often find themselves the caretaker of the group. Reds have the spontaneity to travel to Vegas on a whim, while yellows are the ones arranging carpools, and they notice when one of their group has been left behind somewhere. They might naturally even assign buddy groups to make sure no one gets lost, things like that. Because they plan ahead, it can be frustrating for yellows when a project is changed last minute or when someone doesn't do their part. They made the effort to delegate out, so they're frustrated when people can't follow through. They work well with reds when the relationship allows the yellow to create a plan or an order of things and then the red can execute that vision. Without reds, yellows might plan, plan, plan and never make their plan come to life. But like I said, sometimes yellows get stuck in routine. They do things the same way over and over because it works. If they want to do something new and potentially better, Pair them up with a green. In my experience, green is the rarest of the colors, but it might just be the audiences that I've been doing these tests for. Greens are thinkers. They love to problem solve and think creatively. They love to find something and break it down and rebuild. Maybe there's a new way to do something or a way to boost efficiency of something. They don't always know how to rebuild, which is why pairing with yellows can be helpful but they have a great eye for the big picture and making change. Greens also communicate differently. They're not telling stories like reds. Language is minimal, but functional. They say things once, 
and they try not to say things that they think are obvious. Since they say so little, people often might think that Greens are shy. But in reality, Greens think through what they're going to say and they make sure that it's exactly right before they say anything. Small talk, for Greens, is really rare. When they do get excited about talking, it's about new ideas or intellectual debates. They often might see a problem and be working through the solution in their head, and they don't present the idea until they've already settled on that being the best answer. They get annoyed by the incompetence of others, so Greens tend to hate group work even more so than others. They can do it best when they do it alone. Allow them freedom to create new ideas, but complement them with yellows to plan it out and reds to make it happen. Because Greens can be stuck in their heads sometimes, you need someone in a group that is extremely aware of the group dynamics and who might have the best idea percolating at the moment. The person who always has a pulse on the group is probably a blue. While reds, yellows, and greens tend to be focused on getting something done or accomplishing something, blues are uniquely focused on people. They're usually not concerned with the end product. The big keyword for blues tends to be harmony. They're always seeking harmony, trying to reconcile arguments, and they can't move on in a project until these problems are addressed. They notice when people aren't on board with something. They notice nonverbal cues that other colors might not have been registered at the time. They are excellent listeners and empathizers, always wanting to talk about life and love and feelings. They tend to value honesty, so dishonesty is especially hurtful. They also aren't big fans of criticism. A thousand positive remarks might be undone by one slight criticism. Blues don't appreciate rules or guidelines being set on them, but if you need to, allowing them to help create or approve these conditions would help, as it feels like the group is now appreciated. They give appreciation openly to others, and they appreciate the same in return. Now that we have a basic understanding of the four colors, let's talk about how they connect. They each serve a vital role be it in business, and friendship, and anything. Let's talk about what a group might look like if it were led by someone that was dominant in one of these colors. Let's use a scenario where it's a club, maybe in college or high school, and it's meeting time. This could also be true for something like a business meeting. If this club were led by someone that was a red, what would this look like? The room itself would likely be theater style, all facing the front in rows. The leader of the group would have lots of stories to tell, so as you walk into the meeting, you might overhear their weekend adventures or exciting upcoming plans. When the meeting actually starts, the Red is definitely excited by the current projects. They're excited and anxious to move forward. Last year, this club did a fundraiser, so the Red announces that they'll be doing the fundraiser again. A yellow in the crowd asks the important question, did you actually confirm with the restaurant? The Red responds that no, they haven't. Not yet. But why would the restaurant say no? So the meeting goes on. The topics change quickly, but the crowd is engaged and the excitement is contagious. Now let's pretend that this yellow, with an eye for detail, is in charge. The room is still likely set up the same, but this time as you walk into the room you see an agenda. Maybe it's written on a whiteboard, maybe it's printed out and laid out on the chairs or tables. If this person is a strong yellow, they likely emailed an agenda yesterday so that you could be prepared. The meeting starts exactly on time and will end promptly on time as well. It is efficient and quick though may be a little dry to sit through. There's an upcoming fundraiser, so they break down all the logistics, they delegate out responsibilities, and they make sure everything's taken care of. This is the same exact fundraiser as last year, but people know it'll work. It's always worked. Now let's pretend this meeting is run by a green. This is rare, since greens tend to not enjoy the spotlight as much as the other colors. But this person has just a dash of red, so they're confident enough to get up there. The green has already thought through the meeting and come up with some preconceived ideas and plans, but they still engage the group in brainstorming for their new fundraiser. They take the parts of the fundraiser that worked and they keep it, but then they bring to the group a new venue for the fundraiser that could allow them to keep more money in the end. They reinvent the fundraiser better than ever before. They ask the yellow for help with plotting and planning the to-do list while they ask the red to get people excited for it. These three colors have been actively plotting and planning and they don't notice that some folks don't like this new venue choice. They continue planning while a small group becomes disenfranchised and upset, though it's never brought up or addressed. Lastly, let's look at a meeting run by a blue. 
you'll notice an immediate difference when you walk into the room. If it's something like a general meeting, you'll see greeters at the door to make immediate contact. To a blue, it's vitally important that everyone feels welcomed and included. So they themselves might be at the door greeting people. The room is not set up the same. It's not all facing forward. Instead, the room is a circle so that everyone can see everyone. This way, even the leader feels like they're a part of it. Everyone gets the chance to speak and is respected while they do so. Because the blue is focusing on the process and the conversation, it likely doesn't start on time, and it definitely won't end on time. No one leaves until everyone has gotten their word in and is invested in what's being done. When the blue brings up the fundraiser, they ask the quiet green for ideas first. They sense everyone's personal strengths and they use them for those reasons. The green gives their idea of a new venue, but another member brings up that the venue might save money, but it's further away, meaning less people might attend. The blue leader navigates the debate and makes sure that everyone is able to contribute and speak their mind and hopes to eventually get to a win-win scenario. Harmony is key. Now we spent some time looking at leaders of various colors. Now let's look at the absence of certain colors. What would an organization look like if it was missing reds? If there were no reds, things wouldn't move as quickly. Greens would have great ideas, yellows would plan the execution, and blues would make sure everyone was on board. But no one ever makes it happen. It's easy to plan, 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 and miss your window of opportunity. They'll also miss out on that spark and excitement that reds bring to the table. Without yellows, these greens have new ideas, and the blues are all on board. Then the reds take this innovative new idea and run with it. However, no one told them where to run. No one told them the 18 steps it would take to pull this off. Without planning, the innovative new idea crashes from being executed too early and without preparation. Things look a little smoother if we take greens out of the equation, but the problem is that it's routine. You've done the same event every year, so you'll do it again now. Yellows already have the plans, blues have gotten everyone to buy into it, and reds are excited about it. But it's the same. It can be boring and stale without innovation. And if you never strive to do anything different, how could you do anything better? And lastly, let's remove blues. Now it's all business. Reds can be a little blunt sometimes, so they might somehow upset someone else in the group and no one notices. The yellows plan and delegate out, but maybe they assign someone to a role that needs to be done, but they're not the best person to do it. The job will get done, but maybe people will feel left behind. Arguments will go unresolved and people start to build up animosity towards people or towards the group. Disharmony becomes a major factor to consider. So the point of all this is that everyone is key and has a role to play. You're not trying to change. You're not trying to become an equal number of all colors. It's figuring out how you fit as you are. And maybe it's figuring out what your organization is missing. If there's major disharmony, it might be because of a lack of blues or inaction from the blues on your team. If yellows are rare, maybe that accounts for why your plans always seem to go wrong or why disorganization seems to be rampant. If there's something missing, find out how you can recruit those people. Consider elevating the voices of the rarest of the colors. Make sure you listen to the greens and make sure you allow reds the freedom to run. Use each person for their unique strengths and complement them with other colors to help diminish some of those weaknesses. Blues alone may not get the project done, so integrate some yellows to help with creating and following deadlines. Hopefully you found this useful. Share with your coworkers or friends or roommates or family members. You likely can already pinpoint people in your life and what color they might be associated with. This will change your life as you'll now find yourself saying things like, my wife is such a yellow. Down in the comments, let me know if this was spot on for you and maybe how you use this test. I'd love to know if this is being used for workplaces or clubs or groups or friends. If you disagreed with something, you can let me know that too, but remember that a lot of this can be chalked up to the percentages of certain colors. A yellow with a high red score is very different than a yellow with a high blue, for example. Thanks again for watching and good luck utilizing this out in the world.